This is the Elephone U, the cheaper alternative to the Elephone U Pro. But the question for Elephone is whether or not this device is a step forward for the company or simply just another notch in the belt. The first thing to talk about is without a doubt that design. It really is the standout feature of this device and whilst Elephone have played with the curved display design in the past, this time it is the real deal. The display, not just the glass on top, is actually curved and whilst we end up with a phone that looks glaringly similar to the S9 from Samsung, let's be real, that's probably not the worst comparison. The phone is simply stunning. Even with the moderately low price tag, holding and using this phone in the hand just feels ultra premium because of that display. It's a six inch full HD plus 18 to nine AMOLED panel and it gets decently bright for outdoor use as well. It isn't the best full HD plus panel I've ever seen in my life, but it is pretty darn good. In terms of the outer design elements of the phone, starting on the right side of the device, we have the volume keys and the power button. And these aren't the highest of quality, being a little too clicky to feel super high-end and premium for me, but they do the trick just fine. On the top of the device, we have our SD card slot, and on the bottom, you'll find our single firing downward facing speaker. And unfortunately, there is no headphone jack. On the rear of the device, you can see we have a super glossy rear finish, which makes this one of the slipperiest phones I've used in a while. And then we have the vertical dual cameras, followed by the fingerprint sensor. And finally, below that, we have the Elephone logo. Now, what's really cool about this logo is that it actually glows when you're charging the phone, which is a neat trick and a nice touch by the company. Again, overall, the phone feels really nice to hold in the hand. It's a good size, it looks super flashy, and it definitely doesn't feel like the cheap price tag the phone is actually available for. And so then we have the software experience, and that's one thing that I feel like Elephone have always got pretty close to spot on. Unlike most Chinese smartphones, these devices tend to run a near stock-like software experience, and it's no different here with the U. Unfortunately, unlike the U Pro, the U only runs Android 7.1.1 Nougat out of the box, and there is no word on an update to Oreo in the near future anytime soon. So that definitely is a shame. But other than that, everything from the quick settings to the home launcher, and even to the settings menus themselves, closely resembles what we find on Google Pixel devices, which in my opinion, is absolutely the right move. The biggest departure from the Pixel devices in terms of the software experience is the on-screen navigation buttons. We actually have a set of unique on-screen navigation button designs to choose from, which is nice, but they are actually a bit off in their alignment with the far left button being spaced out slightly further than the other buttons, which kind of freaks me out. And so I've actually found myself using the gesture navigation option instead. So this works very similarly to the iPhone X gesture navigation, albeit a little less refined, but a swipe up from the bottom will take you home, a swipe up on the left will act as the back button, and a swipe up from the right serves as the multitasking button. It's not perfect by any means, but it is a pretty seamless way to interact with the phone without using buttons. And now is probably as good a time as ever to discuss the performance of the Elephone U. So in terms of specs, we have the MediaTek Helio P23 processor, which is a little bit disappointing given the U Pro houses a Snapdragon 660 chip inside, but we still have four or six gigabyte RAM versions available for the U, as well as 64 and 128 gigabyte storage options as well. And we even have the option of expanding the storage with a micro SD card. So things are pretty beefy inside. Now in terms of real world performance though, I would say things are solid without being out of this world. The phone does run very smoothly for the most part with only the occasional hiccup here and there, but without a doubt it handles day-to-day -day tasks very well, which is very pleasing to see. The fingerprint sensor on the rear of the device, whilst a little hard to distinguish below those cameras, is very fast and accurate, and it is definitely in the right position. We unfortunately do not have fast charging with the U, which is a bit of a shame, but in terms of battery life, the phone does house a 3,620 milliamp capacity battery, and this means battery life is solid. No problems getting through a full day and then some with this device, so as long as you charge your phone each night, then the fast charging or lack of fast charging issue shouldn't cause too many problems. Now, I know what you're all probably waiting for, and that is the performance of the cameras on the Elephone U. This category is where most budget smartphones tend to fall apart, and yet it's a slightly different story here with the U. Photos in ideal conditions are actually fairly sharp and detailed, colors are pretty good too, and there is also a portrait mode here called stereo mode, and whilst it's not phenomenal, I would say it does a better than average job with creating those DSLR-like photos. In fact, I'd say most people will be quite happy with the price to camera quality ratio here. In saying this, it's definitely not gonna trump anything in a higher price category, including the OnePlus 5T. So if you're looking for a high-end camera experience, then it's probably best to look elsewhere. So at 380 US dollars for the higher end version of this phone, it is starting to creep up into that mid-range budget territory, but I do think there is enough value here to warrant purchasing this phone. 
It is worth considering though that for only 70 extra dollars, you can grab the U Pro version, which comes with Android 8.0 Oreo out of the box and a Snapdragon chipset inside. So it might be worth considering going down that route because it probably represents a slightly better bang for your buck smartphone purchase. But either way, I will place links to both phones down in the description below. Without a doubt, I definitely think this is a step forward for Elephone. We finally have a real curved display, which makes it a great looking smartphone. The software is decent and demonstrates the right mentality. And I think from here, the only thing left for Elephone to do is to step away from Samsung's design language to create a more unique looking phone and also to step away from the MediaTek chipset. But either way, this phone indicates that they are definitely heading in the right direction. Once again, a huge shout out to Gearbest who have been kind enough to send me this phone to review for this video. I've placed links to their website down in the description below. So make sure you go and check them out. I'm also an affiliate with them. So anything you purchase using those links will earn me a small commission. So if you're interested in supporting this channel, then that would be a great way to do that. But that is it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you later.